Hello, and today we are opening up your brand new OM606 crate engine. It's like Christmas, isn't it? Let's have a look inside. Right, so once you've got the sides off your crate, you're gonna see your engine. And chances are you'll pass out immediately because you'll be blown away by how amazing it is. Like I am every time I open one of my own crates. Uh, and inside, obviously you're gonna find this and you're also going to find a kit box with some various bits. Hopefully it'll be bubble wrapped better than this is because obviously this is just an example. And what we've got in this little kit box here is we've got a stop solenoid, we've got a glow plug relay, we've got the glow plug loom, um, which is very primitive. Uh, we have a fuel input pressure gauge. We've got the remainder of the transmission adapter kit because this crate engine is going to be mounted to a Chevrolet transmission. So I've already assembled the plate onto the back there, but this is the bell adapter and these are the bolts for the actual bolting the transmission on. And you're going to get a, an oil and a fuel filter. There obviously is already an oil and a fuel filter on there, which has been used and run and tested. But if you want to put fresh ones in when you come to put your fresh oil in, then that is what you're going to do. Right, let's talk about the engine. Let's move this kit box and talk about the engine. First, first point about the engine, I've got my finger out now is there's no oil inside, no oil. So remember that these are not shipped with oil. We cannot ship them with oil inside. Why am I stressing this? Because I have had a customer start one of these with no oil in it before and yeah, ruined it. So there is no oil. Let's get on to the good stuff. So we've got the pump. Let's talk about the connections and the, and the main components that you're going to need to know about this injector pump. Well, the chances are if um, you've purchased this engine completely built off as it will already have the turbo kit on and the fuel settings will be pretty much right. Um, maybe some slight tweaking depending on your altitude, etc. but it'll be pretty close. So you don't have to worry about the settings of this Alder system at all until you're well and truly driving it and, and using it. But the the connections, the pipes, you do have to worry about. So on here, we have the connection for the boost feed for the Alder system. So as the turbo pressure increases, the Alder moves forward with boost pressure and it gives the engine more fuel and it makes more power. So you need to take a boost pressure feed from there. Now, obviously, if you've got one of our gorgeous Miller inlets, you can take it directly from there. We supply two pressure takeoff points on the inlet manifold. Remember, this is a diesel. These are not vacuum points. There are no vacuum points at all on that inlet. It's not possible um, because there is no downstream throttle body. But anyway, we don't need to go into that. You'll also note on the billet inlet, six ports under here, and they can be used for things like nitrous. Um, now, they aren't to be used for water meth, because I don't agree with water meth and I've built this engine and I don't want you to fuck it up. So don't use water meth. Don't use any kind of water additive whatsoever. This is a diesel engine, not a water engine. Um, they are developing hydrogen technology, save it for that. Right, so point number two to connect, the vacuum stop. Now, I just mentioned a second ago about the vacuum stop solenoid. So the vacuum stop, when you suck on this, any kind of suction, uh, it will stop the engine, it'll turn it off. These don't have an electric cutoff switch. So to turn the engine off, you have to suck on that pipe. Now you would use something like this, the stop solenoid. You got a, a, a switch feed on the back there, which turns it on and off. Uh, and it comes with a little instruction sheet and it shows you how to connect that up. And you basically are gonna take a vacuum feed from the vacuum pump on the front of the engine. So this here obviously is the vacuum pump for your brakes, but you are going to take a feed off that to the stop solenoid, which will switch off your pump. Now, obviously there are other ways of doing this. Sometimes I'll use a pneumatic switch, pneumatic button, which makes it fully mechanical, mechanical pneumatic. Um, but 
most people go for a stop solenoid. And if you're buying a crate engine, you can just say, I want a stop solenoid, solenoid and you'll get one. Um, okay, so then above the, uh, above the pump here, we can see, we'll swap places. Above, above the pump here, we can see the two connections here to the fuel filter housing. Now this one is the in from the fuel tank. So you would have something like a, an electric lift pump, something like a Bosch 044 or similar, and that would feed fuel pressure from your fuel tank up into the filter head, which then goes through the injector pump itself. Restricted by the return banjo, we've spoke about return banjos before, back out and then back to the tank. Now, uh, to set that up, because if you've got an electric lift pump at your tank, you're going to want to hit a certain fuel feed pressure to this pump, which is two bar, basically. Um, these are the 8.5 superfluid elements, so they will run at a much lower fuel pressure than any other element because of the large inlet ports. Um, but still, two bar is nice. You don't want to go higher because they start to cause issues. Stick at two bar. And basically, with this fuel input pressure gauge, you screw that directly in place of that banjo there. Take that banjo out, screw that in, and then you can use that to set and adjust your fuel pressure. You might have a fuel pressure regulator, uh, or you might do what I always do, and just simply drill out the return banjo to suit. I like to keep things simple. If we can get away from having another system on the vehicle or the build, it's gonna be more reliable, isn't it? So yeah, that's the feed from the tank, from the tank to the filter housing, and then this one is from the filter head back to your fuel tank. Everything else on there is already piped up. You don't need to worry about it. If you have a crate engine that has a mechanical lift pump here, the only difference will be that there will be a pipe coming into the mechanical lift pump and then out of the top of the mechanical lift pump and into the filter head. Again, I will pre-pipe that for you. So that won't require any fuel pressure adjustment setup or anything. It'll just work because that's how they're built and a pipe in from the tank. So yeah, so that's the pump covered. Throttle lever on the back. Um, if it's again one of our crate engines, it'll have our throttle cable kit mounted on there and you can see the throttle cable at the back. Uh, I'll just usually tuck it in somewhere, the throttle cable. It's a two meter cable and you can route that wherever. Just don't kink it, don't any sharp corners or anything like that. So that keeps that nice and simple. Um, if these engines have all been test run, so you shouldn't have to mess with it idle at all. So if you install it, you put it in and you find that it's like running too slow or too fast or whatever, just check your throttle cable connection, well, too fast, check your throttle cable isn't just pulling on a little bit. Uh, and if it's running too slow, perhaps maybe there's a fuel feed issue or something like that, because these have been fully set up on the stand here to idle right. So next points um, that we're gonna cover is we've got the two oil fittings here. Um, now, some people opt to go for an oil cooler. We do the oil cooler kits with the AN10 adapters that fasten into there. Um, just depends on what options you've chosen, but that's a, a dead easy um, kit to fit. Uh, starter motor, regular connections, large 12 volt on the M8 and then the uh, exciter wire, the small one, is just an M6. Uh, and then we have here, now this is quite important because I've seen this neglected before. So moving on from fuel onto the cooling system, this here is uh, the, the heater matrix uh, pipe work. So we've got two of those, one here, and then one round the other side here. You can see it there next to this pipe. Now, on some crate engines, this will be a tapped fitting that points backwards, but nevertheless, there'll be a small around 19 mil fitting here. Now, what you have to remember with that is you, you, you cannot block that off. That system, that heater matrix system has to circulate because as you can see, it's a large outlet at the back of the cylinder head, which is absolutely vital for cooling this beast. 
So you can't just block that off because you don't have a heater matrix. You know, if you've got a hot rod or something like that, you just, you, that has to be connected. So even if it's a loop of pipe, whatever it is, just make sure it's connected. And the same applies to the heating system. If you have a heater in your vehicle, it can't be the type that shuts off and blocks the coolant from flowing around that circuit because, again, you're going to cause heating issues. Just briefly before we mention anything else on the cooling system, um, we've got the glow plugs here, uh, just so you can see the six glow plugs. Uh, and within the kit box will come a length of uh, wire with the plugs on. They just literally slip behind there and clip on. That's the original cut off of a 210 loom. I just give these to make it easy for customers to be able to hook straight up and get going. Um, so literally strip the ends of these wires you know, put them to your glow plug relay. If you opt for one of our glow plug relays, which is one of these, it's a super simple timed relay where you'll, there's an instruction sheet that comes with this, but you'll basically put ring terminals on these, hook it up to there, ignition feed, it takes a feed from the starter as well and makes it dead easy to, uh, to get the glow plugs working. But you might already have that in your vehicle if it was diesel, whatever. Okay, so, Moving round to this side then. The turbo system on this one is a whole set HX40. And you might be wondering why, why is the actuator just flopped down? Well, it's simply the width to go in the crate. I've had to take the three bolts out of there, which is why it's got masking tape around it. So when the customer receives this engine, it's simply gonna have to pull that back up into place and put those three bolts in. Super simple. The worry is if I didn't do that, if it takes a knock when it's in the crate, it could bend something and we don't want that to happen. This HX40 is mounted on one of our billet manifolds. It's got a ceramic coated housing, ceramic coated turbo, um, ceramic coated turbo housing, ceramic coated billet exhaust manifold. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we're one of only two companies in the world that even offer, well, manufacture not offer that manufacture billet exhaust manifolds i think there's just ourselves and a company called steed speed in america so yes you may get a crate engine with one of those you or alternatively you might get a crate engine that has one of these now this is one of our stainless manifolds the cast ones now the these stainless cast manifolds they use technology basically pioneered from the billet one that we've just shown you. But this is like cheaper than half the price and it's stainless. It's amazing. So needless to say, quite a lot of vehicles are going out with these now. As trick as they are, bang for your buck, these are great. And this is uh, our S200, the quick spool race kit, we call it. So, yeah, if you have the quick spool race kit, that's something that you'll have to consider. The two air fittings, the boost, the pressure fittings. Um, so this one was not mentioned. So this one can go to a boost gauge. This one obviously can go to a boost gauge. Boost, by the way, does not equal horsepower. Boost is not a measure of power. More boost does not equal more power. A boost figure does, does not equal a power number. I can't stress enough that boost does not mean a lot. Ask Gail, ask, ask Gail Banks if you don't believe me. Um, however, if you do want a boost gauge, something to talk about down the pub, um, then by all means connect it to that. However, this connection could also be used to control this wastegate here. So this is the TurboSmart external wastegate. It would normally have either a screamer pipe coming down here or it would connect back into the exhaust depending on what the customer wanted. Uh, but that pressure point would go into this fitting, the one closest to the valve seat, and that would allow that wastegate to open as the boost pressure increased. Now the top one is either usually a vent or it uh, can be used to control the wastegate and hold that wastegate closed. So either or, but that's what the two ports are for. Anyway, back to that side of the engine. 
So the one thing we haven't covered yet is the alternator. So let's swap sides. Alternator. So what we do is when we supply a crate engine, we always supply an alternator brand new that has um, a W wire connection. So the reason why we do this is so that you guys can connect a rev counter of some description. There's so many rev counters on the market. I'm not going to start going through which and what, but that will give you a signal. So that blade terminal there on the back, very, very important to have a close look at that. Um, that blade terminal on the back is extremely important if you want to connect to rev counter. This one is the uh, exciter wire to the alternator to crack it up. And this one is the main power feed. Now, I will say also, if you don't have um, an ignition, like a key feed going through a bulb and back to that wire to get the alternator excited, it will still work. So technically, you only need the big wire, the big positive onto here. You'll just have to give it a rev when you first start the vehicle to, to start it charging, basically. So that's a little naughty for you. Look, here we've got the block cooling mod. Um, we like to keep the block cooling outlet straight just for water flow. Uh, however, we do do 90 degree fittings if this presents a problem. I think that on the Nissan Patrol I built, I had to use a 90 degree fitting on there. Did you know that the Nissan Patrol is currently on a t-shirt giveaway? And if you buy a t-shirt, you can win the Nissan Patrol. Anyway, so that covers, oh, there's another point as well I'd like to make. This here is the crankcase ventilation. So you can't block this off because if you do, it will cause problems. I'm not going to go into the problems again, what it'll cause, but don't block it off. Either run that directly to the ground down a pipe because it does have already a one-way valve to keep the oil from pouring out or connect it into the inlet pipe going into your turbo. Uh, also in the kit, kit box, which I didn't show you, four inch air filter, depending on the application and the vehicle that you're gonna be uh, running it in, you might get one of our air filters. And this is one of our um, super squishy, the one I made the video all about. So it's the, the cotton air filter that's fully washable and they are super soft and Amazing. You know when you just when you get like a K&N or a new K&N or a nice quality filter and you're just like, oh, they're so squishy and nice. Not like rock hard, horrible plastic. I don't know why, but these filters, they just, they do it for me. Um, and that'll obviously fit directly to your turbo. Or if you ask me nicely, I have some four inch 90 degree bends, uh, which aluminium ones, and you could in, make an induction pipe system or, or whatever. Okay. So I think we covered pretty much everything. Coolant, yeah, we, we've also obviously got the, the two main radiator hoses, the lower and the upper. Uh, and depending on, again, what vehicle, what application, it might be like this, which is the standard one. It might be like that, which is a Land Rover specific billet one that we make. Um, or it might even have this in between, which is our adapter for allowing you to rotate that water outlet housing wherever you want, which is proper useful. And you can even use that with this standard outlet. However, you can't use it with that, that small outlet pipe. So in the scenario of wanting to fit one of these, you're gonna have to have your water feed going straight out the back or a 90 degree rather than that. And if you're wondering how I do that, I will quickly show you. There it is. There it is. So if you want to modify your thermostat housing, you can take, uh, what size is this? 26 by 1.5. So an M26 by 1.5 tap will tap directly the back of this housing if you, you'll have to kind of get under, it'll tap in there, yeah? And then with that, you can actually install 
a straight fitting or a 90 degree fitting with a one a male to male connector like that yeah so that's nice and straightforward what i might also mention just so you guys at home don't get like a massive shock and faint is if you've chosen a billet injector pump then it'll look like this i should have done this with like some nice light really but this is what you would get and there'll be a solar system engraved on the side you can see this one again is another version that will be for a mechanical lift pump this is going to be running tomorrow and i am quite excited about it mm. anyway so there we have it that's the crate that is pretty much the contents of the kit if you've got any other questions beyond that oh i'll tell you a simple question that might help some people what type of oil should i put in it well i use 5w30 or 5w40 fully synthetic either or if it's got a rear sump it holds slightly less than the traditional forward sump i think the rear sumps hold they come with a dipstick anyway but i think they hold about nine liters and i think those ones are closer to like 10 10 and a half uh, but they have a dipstick anyway so that gives you a ballpark idea okay well look thanks for watching um quickly send me a load of money and i'll build you one of these um or if not then um then don't bother me <laughs> thanks a lot see you later